The following is a quote from my new book, Jesus Lee. There was one luxury that I wasn't aware the Romans had until I visited one of Israel's largest archaeological sites many years ago. The place is called Bet She'an. The city had a long history and connections all the way back to King Saul in the Old Testament. It was a testimony to the lavish lifestyle that the people of that period enjoyed. Sadly, the city was completely destroyed by a catastrophic earthquake that rocked the entire region in 749 AD. The city lies in complete ruins. This oasis in the desert is now abandoned and serves as a reminder of better days. As you walk through the ruins, you can see the massive pillars of ancient theaters and temples as they were on the day that they fell. There's a large amphitheater that is absolutely magnificent, and you can only imagine how majestic it must have been while it was still in use. One of the ruins that caught my eye, believe it or not, were the remains of an ancient aqueduct system that brought water to be used by the washrooms. Yeah, you heard that right. The Romans had toilets with running water almost 2,000 years ago. They had almost all the luxuries and utilities that we enjoy in our homes today. They just had to work a lot harder to get them. The washrooms of the city were for Roman citizens and those with elite status only. So why in the world am I talking about ancient Roman toilets? Stay with me. I promise it'll be worth the journey. I'll navigate through this section with as much tact as I can and, and be as delicate as possible, but in the end, guys, it just is what it is. Imagine if you can for a moment that there are dozens of people using these large-scale public toilets. Once you were finished, it was time to wash up, right? The Romans may be animals and completely brutal when it came to terrorizing their enemies, but they weren't savages, especially when it came to themselves. They discovered that the best way to clean yourself was to use a sea sponge. Not only was it soft and delicate, but it could be easily washed. As you might imagine, no matter how many times you washed it after the fact, there would be a, an accumulation of sorts. They discovered that the best way to clean and disinfect the sponges was to keep them soaked in containers of a wine and vinegar mix. Now remember, they loved luxury. There was no way they wanted to use their hands to use the sponge for washing. So they decided that the most convenient way to clean themselves was to put the sponge on a long stick. Again, I want you to really think about it. The Romans used sponges soaked in vinegar at the end of a long stick. By now, you may know where I'm headed with this. Imagine my shock as I was reading through the Gospels in preparation for the writing of Jesus Lee, and then I got to the part of the story of Jesus' crucifixion. Just when I thought they couldn't humiliate Jesus more, they did. According to the prophet Isaiah, the suffering servant was beaten beyond recognition. They drove a crown of thorns into his skull. They ripped off his beard and they repeatedly punched him in the face. And at the end, just when you thought they couldn't do anything worse to him, the beloved disciple records this. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it. They put the sponge on a stalk of hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. John chapter 19, verse 29.